Good morning, friends. This is Dr. James McBean here. And today we want to talk about how to reinforce your faith so it do not fall by the wayside. How to reinforce your faith, your Christian faith, so it do not fall by the wayside. The text is 1 Peter 5.10 But the God of all grace who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while make you perfect establish strengthen and settle you. The Christian life is going to go through five stages and five period. You're going to go through suffering. You're going to go through perfecting. You're going to go to establishing when the Lord began to establish you. And you're going to go to strengthening when he began to strengthen you. And finally you're going to go to settling when he settles you. You don't just leave the feet again and come back and leave and come back and fall down here and fall down there. You just now settled. You just like a, a child now who, who learned to crawl and learned to run and now you're not falling down anymore. You just settle. Since you've been grown, when last have you fall down? You do not need to force any change upon your Christian life. This is not a avocado that you're going to force to ripe. The Lord will take you through the changes, transition you. This is something that God is going to do by the Holy Spirit. You don't need to force nothing. You don't need to go go trash the boyfriend. Now go trash the girlfriend because you say you meet the Lord Jesus. And your church, the church is trying to separate you from people. Who you knew all of your life. Don't trash nobody because you think you met Jesus. Or Jesus met you. Or you find Jesus or Jesus find you. You might say, so where is the change? Where is the change then? The change is taking place in your spirit, man. Not in your body. Do not make your religious leaders separate you from friends and loved ones. That you know all of your life. Because this is what they do. They try to separate you. See if now. So you must the walk with that one. You know, talk with that one. Then. But if you not walk with them. And if you not talk with them. How are you going to bring them? We're going to go into that. Do not walk in pretense remain in your timing do not start out your walk with Christ and keep pretending that you is all that you are not men pleaser men didn't die for you it is Christ died for you if Christ Jesus called you to salvation while you were living in a common law marriage, he has planned up his sleeve how to get you out of it or how to bring that lifestyle up to date. Go home and continue with your life. What? Yes. You already can't that relationship. 
Do not let tell, do not let men tell you to dump the man. You need to ask them how much cup of coffee you're gonna buy me. How much food you're gonna buy me? How much of my mortgage or how much of my rent you're gonna pay for me? How much child support you're gonna give me? Because once you walk out of that house, see you leave the man because you find Jesus. The man gonna bring another woman in. Who going to take you up with two children, three children? You need to stay there. And you need to win that man over. Don't go in there, go pray and go shout and go get in the spirit. Say so you are impressive. No. He must see something in your spirit. Harder than you're wearing Jesus on your sleeve. In Micah 2 verse 11 If a man walk in the spirit and false would do lie You need to understand that falsehood is a spirit It is a demons Don't walk in the spirit The Bible went on to tell us that we must confess our fault one to another Why? Why must we confess our fault one to another? Because the scripture do not want us to walk in pretense. He do not want us to walk in a spirit of falsehood. Can okay, you know why? The Holy Spirit comes to help our infirmities. All kind of infirmities. And he not going to help you if you say you are strong. And if you say you are, you are healthy. He not going to give you strength if you say you are strong. You're not gonna feed you if you say you are full. You're not gonna enrich you if you say you are already rich. Because he come only to help the weak, not the strong. So when you pretend and hack like you are that, you are righteous and you are saved and you are sanctified. When the time of refreshment comes from the Lord, He walk past you because you say you already have it. In Acts 3 verse 19, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sin may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that's not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. In Romans 3, verse 26, To declare, I say, at this time, is righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believe in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law or what or what work? Nay, by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deed of the law. Christ died for our sin. Isaiah 53 and verses 3. He is despised and rejected, a man of sorrow. And acquaint with grief, and and we hid as it were our face from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes. We are healed. Christ died for our sin. It is Christ that died for your sin. There is nothing you can do to hard to it. So don't hard to it. Your sin already been paid for. You cannot pay this ransom. 
Job said, I have found a ransom. Grow in grace. Grow in the grace of God. Grace means favor. It means unmerited favor. Grow in that favor. In 2 Peter 3 18, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. He must grow. And I like the word that he used, grow. Because grow signifies a beginning and a end. It signifies a beginning it's like a woman get pregnant today the baby didn't grow born the same day it takes some weeks and some months before bones start to develop in the womb you plant a seed today didn't become a tree and start bear the same day i plant an avocado tree in my back and i know it tall it's supposed to start bear this year but it's been planted there for almost eight years now growing What is the change that's supposed to be in your life? What are the change? Because we Christians have it all wrong. We think the change that's supposed to be in our life is a facial change and a close change. And me not talk to him. Me not sleep with him. That cannot change. We're going to deal with the change. Provide all things honest. In Romans 12 verse 17 Recompense to no man evil for evil That's one of the change Provide all things honest in the sight of all men That's one of the change If it's possible As much as light in you Live peaceable with all men This is one of the change Romans 12 19 Dearly beloved Avenge not yourself This is another change but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 11 28, he said, But let a man examine himself. This is something that you and I have to do daily examine ourselves. And how do you examine yourself with the scripture? Like what I was talking about a while ago. Provide all things honest. Are you providing things honest? In 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5, it says, Examine yourself therefore, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. You must prove your own self. Don't let others prove you. Don't let others validate you. Validate your own self. Prove your own self. Because if a man validates you, you're not right. You're not right at all. Because all the people that men validate in the sight of God, they are nothing. So don't let men validate you. Then he said you must add to your faith. In 2 Peter 1 verse 5 to 10. And beside all this give all diligence. Add to your faith virtue. And to virtue knowledge. And to knowledge temperance. And to temperance patient. And to patient godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. Verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence, 
to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, he shall never fall. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Second Timothy 2 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth. Then he went on to say that you must shun profane and vain babbling, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Give attendance to reading. In first, first Timothy 4 13, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Then in verse 15, it says, Meditate upon these things, give yourself wholly to them. You must give yourself to it. Be careful how you heal treat people from the household of faith. What are we talking about? What's the topic? How to reinforce your faith so you don't fall apart by the wayside. Be careful how you heal treat people from the household of faith. Can you know why? They are the one gonna help you. This is where you're gonna get your help. When you fall upon hard time. In Galatians 6 verse 9. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In Galatians 6.10. As we have therefore opportunity. Let us do good unto all men. But especially to them who are of the household of faith. Then he said that you must purge yourself. Purge yourself. Don't wait on men to purge you. In 2 Timothy 2 verse 21. Is Titus, not Timothy. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Purge yourself. In First Corinthians 5 9, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Let yet not altogether with the fornicator of this world. Not the fornicator of this world. Are with the covetous, are extortioner, are idolater. For then you must need to go out of the world. But now I have written unto you that to company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or a covetous, covetous, or an idolater. Are a railer, are a drunkard, are an extortioner. Be such a one not to eat. But before you get it wrong, we're gonna go into this fornication thing. In First Corinthians five verse one, it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such. Look at the word and such fornicator is not as much as name among the Gentiles that one should have his father or wife. Now if it say and such that mean or if it say this sort like what other version said or if you say this kind like what other version say that means there are other kind of fornication if you look in the dictionary today it will tell that fornication is a sexual sin bit intercourse between a unmarried man and a unmarried woman this is not the fornication the bible talking about 
Mm -hmm. You need to understand that the Bible and the dictionary don't go hand in hand all the way. They go hand in hand maybe about 50 to 75 percent and then they go their boat the different way. You see. If you really want to find a dictionary that back up with the Bible, you have to look. If you have a Schofield Bible, it will give you the date when that, when that uh, book of the Bible was written. And you can get a dictionary because they had them. You can get a dictionary from that time. And it tells you, it gives you the correct meaning of that verse. Any form of sexual perversion is fornication. Fornication is a big word for any form of sexual perversion, right down to masturbation. If you go to Leviticus 18, verse 5, from verse 5, and it continue to verse 20, it will give you a long list of fornication. A long list of what it is. Leave the course 18 verse 5. But let us look at Leave the course 18 verse 7. The nakedness of thy father or, thy, or the nakedness of thy mother shall thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shall not uncover her nakedness. Verse 8, the nakedness of thy father's wife, thou shalt not uncover, it is thy father's nakedness. Verse 9, the nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. And on and on like this, you will see the long list of the things that are fornication. It's not just one thing. It's not just one thing. One of the things you don't want the church separate you from people. Because they're going to do this to control you. Saying that they are keeping you in the fold. Because the people that you know when you were in sin, as you walk among them, they're gonna see, they're supposed to see a change in you. And that change, if your shadow is gonna fall over them as you walk among them and live among them and talk with them, and that's how they are going to be drawn into the Christian life you don't need to preach to them you don't need to be on top of them every day you tell them say make him man marry you tap some walk tap drink stop to this tap to that what you are doing is that you are dressing up a hog you are dressing up a hog we're gonna go right back into the mire that's what you are doing you're not changing him from the inside you are just dressing him up or whitewashing him what you're doing but as you live among him and walk among him he will see that you are providing things honestly in the sight of all men he will see that and as he see these little things it's not the stop drink it's not the stop smoking it's not the stop look on woman it's not the stop give joke it's not the stop take a joke. It's not wearing a donkey face. It's not singing gospel song every day when we return. It's not praying and shouting and falling down. It's none of that. When I got saved in Jamaica many years ago, we were in Belfort Pants was a sin. We were in half a year style was a sin. Drinking beer was a sin. We were in a 
bell bottom pants was a sin wearing the high heel platform boot was a sin all of those little foolishness you see women using perfume was a sin women doing high and comb in their hair was a sin straightening their hair was a sin all them little foolishness that has nothing to do with the change that must take place in your life you don't need to put on nothing don't hack nothing just go about your daily life like nothing will happen in your life you pass in a dead yard where you see somebody dead and them have a nine night in Jamaica we know what they call them nine night and the men they are there and them ask if you can buy them a, a box of beer Buy him the box of beer. Why not? If you got the money, you can buy it. You buy them the box of beer. We saw where Jesus turned water into wine. It was wine. That's why the scripture said it was wine. It was wine. He turned it into wine. And when the men they drink it, they said this is the best wine. Don't be too self-righteous. Ecclesiastes says you must not be over-righteous. It will destroy you in the end. The Lord bless you. We will talk some more. Signing out.